Now, I've tried over the years to come up with more and varied evil twin ideas. One of the first ones was the GS with the replaceable bodywork. The R1 with the Ferrari and the R1 changeover. And so what I, I tried, and of course, our Ferrari bike that is now the yellow FCR. We're going to be doing this one over the winter. We had planned on doing the RD, but we had to postpone it for several reasons. But one of the things that I'm always looking for is new ideas, new evil twin ideas. Now, one of the things that I think is really neat about the 650, the way the pipes show in that front scoop opening, I think that's going to be one of the focal points of when we get to do this restoration. And one of the ideas I've had for a long time is this grill that's on the 750. I have a spare grill. And I was thinking I'll make, and it comes on and off very easily. I have some time today. I'm going to be painting at some point in the day. And I thought I would make that one green to match the bike. And then if I didn't like it, I can just spray it black again. It's not a big deal. But what happens, this is, needs a little refresh. It's got some rusty spots on it. And, of course, it's three or four years old now. So that's going to be a little project today. I'm going to pull that part off and see if I like it painted green. And if I don't, I'll take the one off the parts bike and just, just keep it as a spare. Now, what changes, and I always think these evil twin things change, just putting the black wheels on the bike, it changes the whole look of that bike in a way that I didn't realize what a big change it would be when I put, made the spare set of wheels green. And so I've been real conscious of the fact that you can change just a few parts on the bike and make a big change. And in this case, that radiated grill, I'm not sure I'm going to like it green. But I know if I have a spare part, I can try it. Now, I have two windshields for this bike. I have the shorty windshield, the one that's real short. Well, I kind of like this one better. And I had thought, and I was thinking maybe I'm going over the edge here while I have the green paint and the gun. I take a set of these mirrors and make a green set of mirrors because this bike really is a just a one-of-a-kind custom really so it's not a it's not a copy of anything so having these parts and having spare parts makes all this possible and the biggest thing when you can make a, a change to the bike it doesn't cost a lot of money not a lot of time not a lot of effort and it can give you the feeling you have two motorcycles in your collection that's really a cool thing. You don't have to re-register it. You don't have to reinsure it. None of those expenses. And I've done that with the FCR. I've not had to re-register it. Never have to pay for another registration. And not had to reinsure it. And it's just, to me, I call it the evil twin. And evil twin parts. Now this is going to be a little evil twin project today if we can pull this off. And again, I never know if I'm going to like these things. Or what can happen a year later, I can just put the black one on and go, it's like a reverse evil twin. The same way I have the seat that I made for the RD, and that's a handmade seat. I put it on, I ride for six months, swap back to the stock seat, I feel like I have a new bike. It's, and it's just evolved for me. I've called it the evil twins. But the first thing, of course, is to feed the evil fish, feed the evil birds. It's unbelievable. These fish are always hungry. You can see where this part has gotten rusty over the years while we've ridden it. Of course, bike's been ridden in the rain quite a bit. And, like everything else, it needs a refresh. But this is just going to give me a little experiment to do today. Yeah, now that it's off the bike and it's only six screws that take it off relatively easy, you don't even have to take the bodywork off. But you can see what would happen if you don't maintain this. It gets rustier and rustier, rots and... I mean, these are parts that are, this is a 30 years old, 31 year old parts. So what happens is, I don't want it to rust and rot away. It may not be that I can, I actually have another one over on the parts bike, but I'd like to maintain this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this down to the shop, wire brush it all down, paint it green, put the clear on it, put it back on a bike, see if I like it. If I don't, paint it black, put it back. A very non-committal thing. But if it does, I think it'll change to a certain degree the look of the bike. And, and if it doesn't, at least it won't rust away. And any time I restore anything, I try to take the screws, which are 
I'll polish these up, get the rust off of them. Every time you can, you know, when you have a 30-year-old motorcycle, anything you can do to keep it nice and neat and fresh, if nothing else, it makes it a lot nicer to maintain, a lot nicer to work on. In any Evil Twin project, if you can put it back, change your mind and put, in our case with the GS, we can put the West Cooley body work on. And in a matter of an hour, we can be riding the traditional bike. Oh, and that's what I like about these projects. I always like to be able to change my mind or upgrade something and not, if I don't like it, a year later, a month, the next day, just change it back. And that's how this radiator grill is going to be. If I don't like it, and I'll know it, I'll know it'll be nice when I put it in there and see how it looks. And if I don't like it again, I always have, I'm painting stuff black almost every day this time of the year. And actually we have to paint some more mirrors. As I look at mirrors, there's still a couple that are flat black here. So you, you never run out of projects when you have a small collection of old motorcycles. You know, it's the best of all worlds having this project because just yesterday we painted the mirrors and Giving them an extra day to dry before we buff them, that'll be to our advantage, that's for sure. And because the heat is on in the house, being up by the heat, that'll, that'll definitely work to our advantage. And I'm not sure when Turbo Steve is going to have time to break away and work on his tank, but it's sitting here. And we got that little sander, it'll be interesting to see how that works out. So we've been trying to learn as we go, trying to do some new things in the shop this year. Work with some new tools, but this, the thing that's consistent is I love shiny parts. Highly buffed, highly polished parts are my thing. Not flat black and sand cast. Now the first step of any of these, these type of rejuvenations, I call it a rejuvenation. Prep all, I want to get as much grease and oil, dead bugs, dead animals, whatever off of there. Give the paint a better chance to stick. Then I want to wire brush this down it's a delicate part, so I want to be real careful. I don't want to and bend it all up or anything. I want to do both sides, of course. I'm hopeful, hopefully, this will uh, not need to be done for many years to come. But once you get all the loose stuff off and get all the, you can tell, you don't want to paint right over that. Although I know, I know some people would be very comfortable doing that. It wouldn't bother them at all. Now I have a whole selection of little wire brushes I can use just for this type of get the rust off, de-rusting de I guess is the right word here. So we got most of the rust off, uh, at least enough. I want to prime. The next thing is to get this primed. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be nice. And again, I don't know if I'm going to like it, but it's very easy. Once all the rust is off and you have a base coat of paint, to just paint it black and put some more clear on it. And this is not a part we're obviously going to buff out or anything, so it should be very easy. Now, in the case of doing metal of course self etching primer would be my first choice and we want to get of course to seal it hopefully get as uh, as nice and smooth a finish on this as we can even the clear because we're definitely not going to buff this part out Now the sun will bake that in about 15-20 minutes. In the meantime, we'll polish up the bolts, get that squared away, and get the gun loaded up with the green. So there's just, what about one minute by the buffing wheel will do. Clean that up. And again, I'm trying to maintain the bike, so 
it'll last as long into the future as possible and not last be as nice as possible too and most of these things are very very little money and just a little bit of work and I always think every time I can make a little detail, polish a bolt, something small, get rid of a scratch somewhere, just to maintain the bike, just to keep it as refreshed as possible. These old bikes need a lot of maintenance. They're like old houses and <clears throat> old people. Now the key when I'm painting a part like this, that's a screen. Paint it straight from this angle down from as many angles as possible because you don't want to have little spots that don't have paint on them on there. Not only for appearance, but just because I don't want it to rust. Now the sun has really come out. It's starting to get, it actually is a, probably be a nice day to go for a ride if I didn't have so many things to do on a honey-do list. But what I want to do, give that 20 minutes to dry Mix up some clear, get the clear on it, and get it drying. I think that's going to look nice. But again, we're only one, one shot with the flat black away from putting it right back the way it was. Now, while the green is drying, and because the temperature has come up, it's probably 70 degrees out there now, I wanted to do a little experiment. Now, if you look at the Kawasaki the stock paint, it has a little bit of a sparkle to it, just a little bit. Now, in the past, when I've tried to simulate that what I've done is in the first coat of clear just put the tip of a toothpick into some silver paint or some pearl paint and and it'll simulate that and then you just put enough on walk away enough on so, of course I'm going to have to match it I'm going to have to match parts that don't get painted and and hopefully we'll figure that out but we have a chance today because of the the green part and I've just got done painting with the small the four ounce gun I, can, I cleaned it with acetone, and I, I'm going to try putting the clear in the small gun and see, because if the little sparkles come out, and then I can do a test on a piece of aluminum that I have. And if that works, I'll have at least that much when it actually comes to matching this. And I, I've got to put this out, out in the sun, because it does have that little bit, of, a little sparkle of, and, and it's very, very subtle, but I'm, I'm afraid that if I didn't get a, a nice match, I, it just would look wrong. It's one of the things, it's just like the gold paint. I have the pigment already, and I really want to experiment with the gold paint, but it's really got to be exactly right. It can't be almost right. Now, I thought I'd mention this too while we're talking about color matching paint. When you have a motorcycle, and in this case the R1, when I bought it, I made a few parts. I made the seat parts, made the side parts, and I wanted to exactly match the paint. Well, I went to the body shop, of course, and had the Stevie Wonder match. Wasn't happy with that. I had several other people claim they could get an exact paint match. It was very close, but no cigar. Then I decided I'll take, I'll pay the price and call Colorite. Colorite sent me a quart of paint. It was basically double the price of a body shop. It is an exact match. So when you need to match a bike that's that you're very fussy about the match or the two pieces are going to be side by side i would say spend the money and get color right paint and boy luciano has found out with the ducati reds yeah this the stevie wonder matching system it doesn't always work now matching paint this is very funny i went and bought the paint this is really camaro paint my friend Kent Tyser has a Camaro this color. I oh boy, I, I was kind of thinking that'd look great on a Kawasaki. Now, the so it's very easy to match this paint. You just dial up the Camaro and the number, and it comes out perfect. So what happened is, I have I originally painted the motorcycle. And the wheels were black, and I wanted to paint the wheels. And I had just enough paint. I probably had four ounces of paint. And I said, you know, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to go. And right in the middle of it, I'm going to have to run to the, the body shop and get more paint. Well, and I was right. <laughs> so what I did, instead of buying a pint, I bought a quart, thinking that maybe the day will come when I need to repair this bike or do some touch-up 
Or in this case, I, I'm still thinking about making green mirrors. Maybe that is over the top. Maybe I have to see my therapist. But I think that that grill is going to look nice. And, and I'm always aware of the fact these parts take a beating because we really ride the bikes. The kind of mileage and the kind of riding we do with the stones on a road and bumpy roads and oh my god and we're chasing deer down a road and stuff so i really the other thing too is when i made this part and i needed to match that paint and if this see if this didn't match wow you're stuck so a suggestion i have is, and i did it with this bike when i ordered the paint and dennis down at Gavin's, met, met, did an exact match. He really did a perfect job. This is a perfect match. I bought an extra quart of paint so that if I ever have a problem with the bike, it's no problem. Guess what? First time I rode the bike, I dropped it, had to repaint the whole side of the bike, and I was glad I had that quart of paint. Oh, uh, it's the lessons you learn the hard way. So this is plenty dry by now. Oh yeah, we ready for the clear. I'm going to try to give it two really wet coats and then put it aside to dry. It's out here and it's baking in the sun. Today was supposed to be a nice day. It wasn't supposed to go up above 60. It's already about 67 or something. I'm cooking out here. But I think this is really going to look nice. But again, I always like on Evil Twin Project, if I don't like it, the other gun already has the black in it. And in two minutes, it's back to the way it was. And it isn't rusty. And once again, I'll mention, this is the clear that we've used the last couple of years, three years maybe. Really good results. It, it, in essence, it's supposed to be buffable the same day to next day. But I have found that if you let it dry one or two extra days, it buffs out a ton easier. Because the paint, I don't care what anybody says, the paint is still in that drying cycle. Now, that would change if we were in a warm weather climate. Because the as if it were in California... It'll dry in 10 minutes. But in the, the conditions we have in this shop, very inside the shop, very seldom over 70 degrees. So we, uh, we kind of temper it, but it's always good to let it dry that extra day. And it's usually $90 to $100 a gallon, depending on where you buy it. got two coats of clear on that and I think that's gonna be just fine but again making evil twin parts as long as you can go back and undo it you don't run out of your uh, your original paint and boy it's so important to have matching paint when you have old motorcycles I always say never bite a pint always bite a quart and I have been right more than I've been wrong so we put that part aside to dry a couple of days doesn't have to be buffed out very easy to put it back. We got the bolts all polished. And I just think it's one extra little thing that's going to add to uh, our enjoyment of having this fleet of old motorcycles. So I hope you enjoyed the video and hope you have some evil twin ideas of your own. Anyway, thanks for watching.